welcome back. This is part two of my lecture on the uh, advanced topics in color. And so the um, last point I was going to make about the shape of the chromaticity chart is this straight line right there. That represents where um, the infrared and the ultraviolet go outside our spectrum. And that's color that we don't see. And that also explains why um, things like uh, violets and red violets tend to shift into neutral much faster. There seems to be less distance, right? Like our eye doesn't seem able to see nearly as many um, versions of shifting from high intensity violets to low intensity violets than we do compared to some other colors. And, but you know, one of the flaws with the color wheel I said the color wheel has this flaw of like it assumes equal distance from everything and it assumes a certain kind of symmetry that is just not there whereas actually measuring the chart reveals a very different kind of shape and when you realize this shape it helps you in terms of color mixing and thinking about those things but both the chromaticity diagram and the color wheel have another flaw which is they both uh, think of color in two dimensions um, an older model is the Munsell color diagram, a color spheroid or color tree. And it tries to understand the shape of color in three dimensions. If you go back to think about our first lecture on color, we talked about um, the fact that color has three characteristics, hue, intensity, um, and value. Well, if it has three characteristics, it really needs a three-dimensional model to show how all those three characteristics interrelate. And so what you can do is you can chart out color that way, where for each hue you make a separate chart. Here, let me show you. Like this is one chart here and one chart there, right? And so for each hue you can make a chart going from pure neutral right down the middle and then figuring out where is the most intense version of that color, right? At what value level? And so obviously with a hue like a yellow, yellow, orange, right? The most intense version of that color is going to be high, very, very light on the, the highest, li lightest levels. Whereas on a uh, cyan type blue, it's going to be closer to mid value. And if it was more like a blue violet or a violet or a red violet, it would be down here in the ones or twos, right? So the shape for each, um, each hue is different because, as I like to tell my students, there's no such thing as a high intensity um, dark value yellow. Um, and there's not that much that we would say is a high intensity light value um, blue violet, right? And so each hue has a slightly different shape, and then that creates this very kind of odd specific shape of the color spheroid um, because when you expand it all the way around. And so this allows us to chart value going up and down, hue going around the spheroid, and intensity going from the outside of the spheroid to the center. And so this type of study, really learning to pay attention to color on this kind of scientific level, has led artists to find much more subtle things that they want to say about color. Um, learning that color is about color interaction and color um, relativity, that the way we see a color is in relation to other colors. Joseph Albers taught a color class at, at Yale, um, and he really taught about how color is about perception, and perception is about relative comparisons. So the color of this square here, we see it at this edge by comparing it to that color, whereas we see it at this edge by comparing it to that color. So it creates this illusion that the color is shifting from there to there, even though it's not. Um, here's a, a better example. I, I made a chart that kind of shows how this process um, can work. And what I did was um, taking these two colors, I made different versions of them. And the point is to make versions where two different colors look like the same color. So um, in this case, let's see, um, in this case, this color and that color are the same color, but because of the way they are, um, they have color arranged around them, right, that they look 
quite different from each other. Another type of um, you know uh, color interaction that artists and we talked about this earlier um, in the other lecture uh, artists started to get interested in was optical mixing so we saw a very early attempt at this with the artwork of um, Seurat and um, but we can also see optical mixing in in later works by like the uh, some of the op artists. Um, like these two pieces. Um, like this, this color, the impression of this color here, right, is just from this same base color. That base color is the same all the way through, but it's just then the change of these color lines. And like these lines end right there, but these lines go all the way to there. And it's just those changes that create the sense of these three areas having three different color fields. Here's some more kind of optical mixing, like this Bridget Riley piece, which is pretty intense. Um, Arthur Honer is probably, um, as an experimentalist creating optical mixing effects, probably the most successful artist to uh, to do that where and one of the things he figured out is that these kind of processes work best if you work in very very light values um, because then there's more light bleeding from one to another and it works best if your base color is kind of like this very pale gray that's almost a, a white but not quite a white um, that's just open enough to um, allow our eye to read into it various colors it's a little bit hard to see looking at this but it's um maybe I gotta maybe we can zoom in a little bit more. Well, that's about as best we can. But it it does very successfully create these kind of bleeding of colors one to another. Let's see if I can go back. There we go. Alright, and so I want to end here with this Ellsworth Kelly just to just get to remind you to think about like knowing all that we just learned about color how much more subtle and um, how much more thought there is to a piece like this that is very um, looks very simple but is actually extremely um, I don't know there's a, a there's a whole lot of of thought and study that underlies a painting like this and a lot of knowledge about color all right that's